Hi, this is Travis from the Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this clip on the Political Voices Network. We can't have them for free every day, but Noel Kessler is here. <laughs> yeah. Wildly popular comedian extraordinaire. Hey, Noel, welcome. Good morning. Hey, hey Stephanie. Thanks for having me back. Happy to be here. I, you know, I well, first of all, it's arrestmas season, as you know. I mean, I, we've, we are between Trump arrests, but uh, I just can I just say of all the fantastic legal and political points you make on Twitter, your tweet, Trump looked like a summer sausage rolled back and forth across a barbershop floor, just made me so happy. <laughs> do what I can because all the people going oh he loves this it's going to be great for him oh my god all you have to do is look at his face right he is humiliated and I'm and I am here for every second of it exactly I mean nobody lives in more self-centered fear than Donald Trump I mean that is his overarching characteristic it always has been all the bravado all the machismo hides a very very scared very emotionally stunted person who needs to be coddled and sedated and all kinds of things for the big moments in his life, which last Tuesday certainly was. Yeah. What I mean, I, I know Mary Trump was talking about that, too. He's just terrified. I think uh, Brian uh, Karam, is it, mm -hmm. you know, looked at the close up of his face and he said, I've never seen this expression on his face. Fear. I, I don't know. Humiliation. I mean, a, a lifetime of karma catching up with him. What well, what was your sort of reaction on watching that whole thing? You know, it was all of the above. It reminded, you know, he he was clearly sort of out of it, too. You know, yeah, they, they yeah. sort of have to handle him. He doesn't travel well. So spending the night before up in Trump Tower, you know, I think he went on his benzo breakfast kind of routine to keep himself from <laughs> freaking out. But he he was terrified. You got to understand yeah. the guy spent his whole life trying to prevent that from happening. You know, he would have NYPD security guards walking around him in New York City. He, he sort of built this wall around himself that he was untouchable and above the law. And they're telling him he's not anymore. And it, it's it's weighing on him, as we can see. I just love the headline this morning. Trump rages at slovenly Bill Barr. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for saying he'll likely get indicted in classified documents case. I mean, I don't, hard to pick a winner there, but still, I just, he has no self-awareness, does he? None, none whatsoever. And he's, you know, he's got like that, you know, he projects everything, right? His whole image is like, try, he's been trying to like pretend like he's not bald since 1985. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like everybody in the world knows you're bald on top, but he still he walks around in an illusion. You know, yeah. that that's what Trump is. He's sort of like the world's greatest example of self mythologization and just like no sense of reality and sense of self. Yeah. And, and that's why he tries to control everybody around him. That's yeah. why, he, you know, he would he would pick like what the outfits were of the women who worked in the White House. You know, he wouldn't let people on his TV show he didn't think were good looking enough, oh, you yeah. know. So seeing Bill Barr bloated and, and talking, you know, smack on the Sunday morning show has probably set him off, as everything does. Oh, you my know? God. And Bill Barr could not have been a bigger lick spittle yeah. law, you know, rule breaker for Donald Trump. Um, you are a poet, sir, first and foremost. You uh, tweeted, the bloated oaf who now cries like a mottled piece of salty spam he has always been about the weaponization of government, wanted to use federal agents to seize voting machines when his diapered ass lost the 2020 election. <laughs> that is, first of all, a multi-layered tweet. But secondly, I mean, honestly, to see him or Bill Barr talk about the weaponization of, yeah. the, of the DOJ, you're like, oh, oh my God, Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and that's what's so maddening. I try to put it in like comedic sort of flowery language, but that's the reality. It's like, what are you talking about? You spent four years doing that. You were chanting lock her up as a campaign slogan. And now you're talking about the weaponization of government against you. And, and that's always been Trump's game, like beat him to the punch. I'm going to do the thing and then I'm going to accuse you of doing what I just did and hoping enough people get swept up in the sort of fervor I'm creating yeah. that they'll go along with it. And that's yeah. that's what's falling apart around him. The illusion that Trump had always created was his power and he sees it slipping away. Well, yeah, even just yesterday's tweet right world war three like he just you know like nothing all the protests and things he's calling for they're just not happening right i mean that that's the the emperor finally does have no clothes 
There, you hit you hit your head. You, you know, you hit the nail on the head right there, Stephanie. That's it. His trip downtown, he probably thought like Fifth Avenue was going to be lined on either side right. with MAGA supporters and placards and everything, and it wasn't. And he knows it. He knows there was only ten, you know, twenty people outside of Mar-a-Lago when he left the day before, you know, or a dozen. So. You know, that's what stood between him and justice was this huge group of Americans that he was able to sort of bring to his defense. That's what January 6th was, right? Go fight on behalf of my ego. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it was. He knew he'd lost the election, right? He just wanted to continue to sort of assuage that giant damaged ego. Yeah. yeah well, as you put it, his slurpy boys and comb over cabal of Peckerwood GOP hypocrites <laughs> and country club cocks will, of course, repeat his idiocy and ignore their toothless hordes to take up arms in his defense. Don't fall for it, MAGA. You're being used like the chair Ted Cruz's wife ties him in, ties him to every Friday. Well, that's new information, that part. But OK. <laughs> <laughs> somebody asked to explain that and they said it's biblical and referred to the leonard cohen line and hallelujah and i'm like oh yeah that's what i was thinking yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's what it is <laughs> i mean the whole new york scene with uh, marjorie taylor green i i just thought it was so hilarious you were so funny about all this you <laughs> Um, you said MTG is just pissed that she's a solid two in scrapple skank georgia and in new york city she get passed over for a dead rat <laughs> God. But then I don't just you always have some inside information. You said PS a surfer friend of mine drove Marjorie Taylor Green in his Uber from Mar a Lago to a hotel recently and said her breath smelled like a combination of a wetsuit that wasn't rinsed and left in the trunk of a car in July and a milkshake made out of buttermilk and bone broth. Oh, oh God. Oh True story. That is really descriptive. Oh, <laughs> It's a true story. And the kid texts, he's a guy, he's a grown man. He texted me right after it happened. And he's like, bro, I just dropped off Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know? And he said there was like almost a palpable sense of evil in the car. Like, yeah. I'm not lying. He was like, there was an evil feeling when she got out of my car, just like bad energy, bad yeah. mojo, and that lingering smell that I described. You also said Marjorie Taylor Greene and Carrie Lake were both in Mar-a-Lago uh, last or the other night. Trump always bragged about his two at a time skills. Guess he's applying that to his VP candidates now as well. That's going to be one hell of a Jello wrestling match to pick a winner. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, the, I, the, I'm tempted on the Carrie Lake thing. Just the loser ticket, the sore loser ticket, right? No doubt, and, and you, you know it's coming. There's a showdown. You know, and Marjorie Taylor Greene herself released a video of her walking into Mar-a-Lago down this long line of people cheering her. And Carrie Lake is obviously more polished and 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 prettier with all the filters applied, but doesn't have the political position, you know, hasn't really held office. So that'll be an interesting uh, cat fight, as it were. I know that's not the most politically correct yes, way to that's record it. Right. You, you also said, here's the guy Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene compared to Jesus. Trump spent decades abuse, abusing teenage girls. His cocaine and model parties at the plaza were one of the worst kept secrets in New York. I mean, you know, it, that was the SNL skit yeah. this weekend, right? It's just him comparing himself to Jesus. It, it's dear God, right? I mean, if you have to hear it. Oh, and she also said, or Mandela. He's like Jesus or Mandela. Right, or yeah. Mandela, yeah. you know. yeah. Both, both of which, I mean, I have a, a, a rude joke there, but, uh, you know, it's like nobody is more the opposite of Christ, you know, or, 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 or Nelson Mandela than Donald Trump. And he really is a predator. He's a decades long predator. And it was a poorly kept secret. I have friends that he's, you know, done horrible things to. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, one more about Marjorie Taylor Greene I loved. You said, it makes me sad that a runt like Marjorie Taylor Greene insults New York City. I've never been to Hog Blossom, Georgia or wherever the F she's from, but I bet her people came through Ellis Island uh, at one time and were damn glad to see New York City. Um, yeah, I mean, just her. Well, and it's it also your friend talking about how she smells. That was interesting, her talking about how New York smells. So, you know, <laughs> ironic. Exactly. It's ironic. It's hypocritic. And it's insulting to all of America. You know, New York City represents something for the world, for America, yeah. for freedom. You know, yeah, it's got it's not in its finest hour, but you don't kick it when it's down. Yeah. You know, it's still the financial capital of this country. You know, it's still it's still a vital cultural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh -oh. multicultural. It's multi-ethnic. Yeah. yeah. And we were saying the opioid crisis in her district is off the charts. So for her to talk about, you know, drugs as if. 
Uh, anyway, um, by the way, on uh, the uh, uh, Clarence Thomas thing, you said, P.S., these vacations have been going on for 20 years, and we're just now learning about them, in case you're wondering how deeply corporate media has been failing democracy. 500000 a year in vacations for 20 years is $10 million to a SCOTUS. No wonder abortion is now almost illegal. Um, thank you. That You know, why are we just hearing about this now? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's almost a failure of the press. And that's not to say there haven't been articles written. L.A. Times did one. New York Times did one around 2011, I believe, about some of the gifts he's received. Right. You know, the Bible that he got. He got Frederick Douglass's Bible from the same billionaire Harlan Crow, which was a nineteen thousand dollar gift that he did declare. But the fact that he wasn't declaring the private jet trips, the five hundred thousand dollar summer vacation in Indonesia on a super yacht for 19 years and then these reporters for ProPublica broke the story by looking up flight logs you know by flying yeah. over there and talking to scuba divers and it's a massive massive story but it's too late it's been 20 years it's been 30 years since he's been on the bench you know well yeah you said the fact that Clarence would say he enjoyed vacationing in an RV in a Walmart parking lot when in reality he was staying at Top Ridge and chilling on a billionaire super yacht in Bali in Bali lets you know just how dumb the GOP thinks their audience is and they would not be wrong um, but I think the larger point about the media, right, is, is you know, what you were saying that you feel like in some ways we're, you said, I admire and respect many members of the press and mainstream media, but honestly, I feel like we're back where we started in 2015, 2016. Uh, it shouldn't be such a party when we reach the uh, apotheosis of Trump's criminality. I mean... Yeah. Absolutely. It's not election night in America, you know, and that's how it was being covered last Tuesday, right? All the anchors were on a panel starting right. at 8 p.m. and they had the bright set and everyone's giggling and spend an extra half an hour in the makeup chair. And I get why, you know, it's exciting news, but what we're talking about has real world consequences. You know, we're facing democracies like sort of greatest threat and attack in our lifetime, if not in our country's history since the Civil War. So to treat it like this is going to be an exciting, titillating event is, is disingenuous to the American public. And it's, you know, it's cynical and it's profit oriented at the production level of TV networks. And they know it. Yeah. You know, Jeff Zucker ran NBC Entertainment when mm -hmm. I worked for Celebrity Apprentice, right? He then went to CNN and did nonstop Trump coverage for two years during the election. Jeff knows everything I know about Donald Trump. You don't mm -hmm. think, you think me, as the, you think I'm the only guy on set who knew how messed up Donald Trump was, who knew that he could barely read? You yeah. know, Jeff Zucker knew that. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't tell people that. He just, you know played up the hype and then he's you know then he retired and went out to the Hamptons to live in his 20 million dollar you know whatever home yeah yeah absolutely all right so who's up for a great bottle of wine well according to a recent survey about 62 percent of the country is ready to raise a glass but how do we decide what it is that defines a great wine when all of our palates are so uniquely different Imagine a fun and interactive process that actually takes your preference into consideration, allowing you to create, design, and even package a wine that's right for you, your event, or clientele. Welcome to Blentik Wine Company, and welcome to your wine. Blentik invites you to participate in a revolutionary new process whereby the everyday consumer can create and design a personalized wine blend from the comfort of home. Whether blending is an individual, date night activity, wedding party, or restaurant tour, our one-of-a-kind system helps put the power of creativity back into the only discerning palette in the room that matters, yours. Welcome to Blentique Wine Company, and welcome to your wine.